and it didn't look great. I really didn't like the look of the tank the way it was. The full body gold comp, not just the head. I just wanted to show you a difference, what a month makes with Regani Fry. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be doing my May 2022 fish room update tour. So let's get straight into it. And this is the first tank getting an update this month. It's my five foot long Neolamprologus Leilupi Grow Out Aquarium. It also houses some other Tanganyikan cichlids. You can see some black and white looking cichlids in here. They're actually Julochromus regani, the Zambia gold variety. And uh, some of them are quite large, they're actually adults. And I've also got two Neolamprologus brevis sunspot in here as well. Now, a couple of weeks back, I posted a video about what happened to all the Neolamprologus leilupi and Judochromus regani that I had in this aquarium and how I sold them off. And in that same video, I restocked this five foot tank up with Neolamprologus leilupi, these guys that you see here. In that video, you would have seen the bottom pane of glass was covered in algae and it didn't look great. I really didn't like the look of the tank the way it was with all the algae on the bottom pane of glass. And at the time I had about 10 bristlenose catfish in this aquarium, but they weren't eating the algae off the bottom pane of glass. They were, however, doing a great job at eating the algae off the side panels. So you can see on the back of the aquarium, the algae has been eaten away. I haven't touched that as well as the side panels. I do occasionally clean the front pane of glass, but again, the bottom pane of glass appeared to never have changed. Didn't look like they were touching it. So I decided to bite the bullet and clean it myself. Now I knew this tank was gonna get absolutely filthy. As you can see in this footage here, it is crazy how much algae I chiseled basically off the bottom pane of glass. I did a massive water change that day on this aquarium. Basically took out almost all the water and then stocked it back up with water from my sump system and brand new water change water. So it's basically like a pretty good water change for these guys. And over the course of a couple of days, the Leilupi have actually brightened up. So because the algae was covering up that bottom pane of glass, the bottom pane of glass was green obviously, and that in turn made the Leilupi darken up a little bit because they want to try to match their darker surroundings. So that's not good obviously, you want to show Leilupi with their beautiful bright yellow orange coloration. So I just removed all that algae, took a little bit of time and a lot of elbow grease to scrub it all away. But uh, after literally two to three days, they start to color up. The great thing with having styrofoam on a bare bottom tank is that it's obviously going to reflect bright light back up and in turn encourage the Leilupi to brighten up and have a more intense coloration. So if you guys are going to have Leilupi, if you plan on having Leilupi, don't put them in a dark aquarium, especially don't put them over a dark substrate. That's what I recommend for you guys. Keep them over a nice bright white substrate and they will look awesome for you guys. So again, with this, obviously I don't have any substrate in here. Uh, I've got just the white styrofoam that the tank is sitting on and that brightens them up enough for me. The other thing I was considering because of the amount of algae growth I had in this aquarium the other day, I was thinking, oh, I should just put in a nice sand bed in this tank and that will fix everything up. And I was thinking I wouldn't have any algae growth on the sand bed and you know, the Leilupi can exhibit a little bit of a natural behavior. They'll be able to dig around the rocks and stuff and I probably could aquascape this quite nicely. But for the time being, I'm not gonna do that. We'll see how it goes because what I've done now is I've pretty much tripled the amount of bristlenose catfish I've got in this aquarium and I'm hoping that they are able to keep the algae at bay with the amount of bristlenose catfish I now have in this aquarium. I've almost got 30 in here now. So I've made room from the bristlenose catfish grow out tanks, popped them in here, and I've got a spare aquarium now for other fish. So that's fantastic. And the other thing is they're gonna hopefully keep this aquarium clean for me. But if the bristlenose catfish can't keep up with the algae growth, I will pop in some sand and then do a proper aquascape on this aquarium. And I'm sure that will look amazing with this amount of Leilupi in here. The next tank I want to show you guys this month is this one, and it is my Chilodochromus regani tank. It's got my original breeding pair in here, and as you can see, there are a load of fry in this aquarium as well. Now the reason why I wanted to show you this aquarium this month was because I showed you it last month, and I just wanted to show you a difference, what a month makes, what four weeks make with regani fry the size that they've put on, and the different coloration they're starting to exhibit now, basically the different pattern, the different barring that they get. Now, as I said in that video in April 2022, Regani Fry, when they're born, when they're newly swim, free swimming, they typically have vertical barring down the length of their body. 
However, as they start to push towards the two centimeter mark, they start to lose that vertical barring and transition into their adult horizontal barring. And these guys are starting to go through that transition now. You still see they kind of somewhat have that vertical barring if you look close. However, the horizontal barring is now more prominent than it was a month ago. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because I find that quite interesting. But I love these fish, they're quite peaceful. Regani are said to be the most peaceful out of the whole Gilidochromus genus, and I do find that as well. However, they will pick on their own species if they don't like a particular Regani in their aquarium. You can see the guys here, the fry, picking off the algae, grazing off the algae, off the rocks. I like that, that's great because that supplements their diet. It gives them some food during the day when they're not being fed and they've always got that supply of food. I don't wholly rely on that though, so please don't rely just on the algae to feed your regani. Uh, you need to supplement their diet just to ensure that they're getting the wide range of vitamins and minerals they need to grow up into healthy adult fish. Uh, but it is a great supplement there. So again, guys, I just want to show you this tank just so you can see the transition the guys have made and how much growth they've put on in the last four weeks. And this is the next tank getting an update this month. It is my Neolamprologus Brevis Sunspot Aquarium. Now, I'll point out straight away that I've been having a problem with cyanobacteria in this tank. I've been battling it for a number of weeks. I've been adding ChemiClean to the aquarium to help combat the cyanobacteria. I actually think the ChemiClean has an expiry date. It doesn't say so on the packet, and I haven't really been able to find anything online that states that it does have an expiry date. The ChemiClean, I used to pop it in, used to wipe out the cyanobacteria within a number of days, and it was great. However, it just seems to have stopped working, so I'm not sure what the go is with the clean if anyone knows could you please pop a comment because I'd love to hear from you anyway on this aquarium so we've got Neolamprologus brevis sunspot there are three adults in this aquarium the last time I showed this tank it was full of fish and it was almost difficult to tell which were the parents and which were the fry the fry had grown that large so it's been a while since I've shown this aquarium uh, you can see on the left there the male sitting basically over the shell or pretty much sitting on the shell he's got two females in this aquarium there's another shell right at the front of the tank uh, there's a female in there and the shell he's sitting on has a female in it as well now you can see there's not much decorations in this aquarium it's just pool filter sand two shells but these guys don't need much in terms of decor if i was to have more than one male in the aquarium i'd try to block the line of sight of the two males you could potentially if you really have aggressive females do that for the females as well these two females are semi-aggressive towards each other but the male shuts down any aggression between the two females and it's quite funny to watch him break up their fights they're nowhere near as aggressive as lamprologus oscillatus gold those guys are very aggressive regularly will bite my hand when i'm working on the aquarium feel like a little pinprick then because you don't expect it it's actually quite uh, surprisingly shocking to see the amount of aggression from them these guys aren't like that but if i was to have two brevis sunspot males in here i would want to block the line of sight and again with this size aquarium being a 100 liter aquarium i probably wouldn't do that i'm probably pushing it with just having a, tr a breeding trio in this tank now this tank is quite high it's about 40 centimeters high by 45 centimeters wide with these guys they live basically on the sand bed they will swim up into the water column but not much they basically love to hug their shells as much as possible and because of that with tanganyikan cichlids such as shell dwelling cichlids you want to have a shallow aquarium with a large footprint a tall narrow aquarium won't really suit these guys. It's better to have a larger footprint for them so they've got a lot of space on the bottom of the tank for them to dig around their shells and spawn. But then again, they don't even really dig that much. So I have a, only a very thin layer of pool filter sand in this aquarium. It's uh, at max two to three centimeters deep and they don't dig anywhere near as much as Neolamprologus multifasciatus or Lamprologus oscillatus gold. Those guys dig heaps, these guys hardly ever. Even when I had them in a larger aquarium on the sump system, basically the sand bed was just flat. And that's another reason why the cyanobacteria has been able to take hold in this aquarium, because these guys just don't dig as much. Because I've taken out the older generations of fry out of this aquarium, they've been able to spawn and raise new generations of fry in here. So you've got to see in this footage that there are some fry dotting around the sand bed. They're very, very well camouflaged on this sand bed, very hard to see. And uh, they're just pushing about 
or the 0.8 centimeter mark. So not quite a centimeter yet. And there are loads in here, but I've got no idea how many there actually are. I just keep seeing more and more fry in this aquarium. But if you would like a more in-depth video on how to breed Neolamprologus purpose sunspot, you can watch the video right here. I did an in-depth species profile specifically on these guys. Interesting little fish from Lake Tanganyika. Great little shell dweller. And if you are interested in getting into shell dwelling cichlids, these guys are a good option to, to try and start with. Multifasciatus would be a little bit easier as uh, the, the spawns and subsequent spawns, they won't cannibalize each other. I find with my Neolamprologus purpose sunspot fry that the older generations of fry will pick off and eat or basically cannibalize their smaller brothers and sisters. So newly hatched fry from the shell got older generations of brevis sunspot fry in the same tank with them. Those newborn babies will get eaten by the older fry. All the generations of fry I've raised have always eaten the younger generations of fry. The parents don't exhibit any really parental care over the fry, basically leave the shell, get kicked out and are left to fend for themselves. So if you want something a little bit easier where the fry and the parents help you grow up the subsequent spawn, I really recommend you do try Neolamprologus multifasciatus as they will step breed. The fry won't cannibalize the younger fry. And you can see the size difference there between the male and the female in this footage. The female on the left, the male on the right. And uh, the females, is pretty much their maximum size. They might get a little bit larger than that. Uh, and the same with the male, that's pretty much his maximum size. But the females develop a nice yellow spot around their belly area when they're about to spawn or when they're in spawning condition. And that is where they get the sunspot name. Beautiful little fish. I want to show you guys this aquarium basically because I love the fish that are in it, particularly the largest fish in here. Uh, this tank holds my Altolamprologus compressorceps trio. I've got some gold comps in here. That's the full body gold comp, uh, not just the head. Uh, these guys are stunning fish and uh, especially the largest one that's in the middle of the aquarium, always hiding in those rocks uh, and occasionally comes out. Now I did a couple videos a while back, uh, a couple weeks back about using dither fish in your aquarium to uh, bring out shy fish. And I had some Venchalis triteca in here and they really did a fantastic job. However, I did unfortunately sold them, moved them on, and I uh, had to catch them out. And that kind of somewhat undid all the good work that they did uh, as did the fish to bring out the shyness of these guys. Uh, however, I still am seeing them a lot more than I used to. Before I added the Ventralis Triteca to this tank, I would never see the compressor steps. But as you can see here, they're not as shy as they used to be. I'd very rarely see this gold comp out of the rock work uh, and like you see here it would I'll never basically see it I just see the tip of its head and now it regularly comes out in the open but it is at the moment a little shy because basically I've shoved the big DSLR camera right in front of the aquarium to film for you guys so it isn't exhibiting its normal behavior of coming out into the open I believe that it is a male being the largest out of the three that I have in this aquarium and the other two are quite small they could be different generations though I don't know uh, but it is the, the largest uh, comp that I have in the aquarium. Also in the aquarium, you can see on the left there, I've got some Neolamprologus similis. These guys are shell dwelling cichlids from Lake Tanganyika. Unfortunately, they are both male. I believe they're both male and they haven't spawned uh, ever since I've owned them. And I think if they were a pair, I would have spawned them by now, uh, but they're not. So uh, I've just got them in here. Again, acting as dither fish with the compressor steps. Got nowhere else for the similis to be at the moment and I'm not ready to spawn them anyway, even if I did have females. I just don't have the room at the moment because the amount of fry I have coming through with calvus, my black and white calvus fry, those two different types, and leilupi, just don't have the room for more additional species of fry. So I'm gonna to have to do something about that in the near future because I do want to breed the similis. I'm just not ready yet at the moment. But things are always happening in the fish room. Things are always evolving. I'm always moving fish on. So that day might come soon enough. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys this aquarium because I love that gold compressor set. And I am really looking forward to breeding these guys. Very deep gold coloration. Uh, when it comes out in the open, it's got so almost a reflective property to it. Uh, almost looks like a gold foil. Really hoping to spawn them maybe in the next year or two. Gotta be very patient with compressor seps, just like calvus, they're slow growing fish. But hopefully one day I will get a pair out of the three I've got in here and spawn them. But we'll see what happens. So there you have it guys, my May 2022 Fish Room Update Tour. 
Really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment, and consider subscribing to my channel. I really would appreciate it. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.